Let's see that there. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Monday night Let's Play Co-op. Tonight we are checking out Asmodee Digitals mixed with Fantasy Flight Games mixed with uh, I think there's another studio involved with this. Anyways, it's the Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game, formerly Lord of the Rings the Living Card Game, formerly Lord of the Rings the Cards, the movie, the video game, the Grand Adventure, something like that. I don't know. I feel like this thing has gone through three or four different names, but here it is now live on Steam, on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch uh, as Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game. And yeah, it's based off of the physical tabletop uh, living card game version, uh, which is still going, right? I think? Yep, still yeah. going. Yeah, they didn't lose. Fancy Flight hasn't lost that license yet. Um, <laughs> Not, nothing bad against Fancy Flight. It's just like Netrunner's gone. Warhammer 40k went. Yeah. Uh, that voice you may recognize from past streams as Tally. Hello. And we are also joined tonight by Locke. Hello, everyone. Who is here to fill in and ask us the pertinent burning questions about this game. Um,. If you have, I'll start off by saying this, if you've played the living card game, the physical version, there's going to be some things that look f familiar, but it is very much not that game. Like the card art is very familiar, the card art is very similar, and there's a few things here and there that are share similarities with the game, but they've, was it that you said the other night, Tally? They've kind of... Yeah, they've kind of... They've actually kind of mashed it up with one of their more recent releases, uh, the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. So the threat meter is actually very reminiscent of the threat meter in that game, I'd say. And and also I think, like, this is going to sound bad, like, you shouldn't, you're gonna, you shouldn't make verbs out of this stuff, but they've, like, hearthstone eyesed it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> Did you like you that, Locke? We're, we're in a post-hearthstone age, so... Uh, digital implementations of card games definitely need to step it up yeah compete. yeah i got hearthstone last night yeah did sam yeah i was gonna say did sam get it pass you off as a special pipe um all right uh We'll we'll dive just right into a co-op game here and kind of show it off before we get into these other aspects, the decks and uh, expansions and stuff. The main game exists as either a single player or uh, co-op online with one other person. Um, you play through these encounters. Um, so the base game comes with three, The King of Carrion, A Feast for Trolls, and Gundabad Awakened, Awoken. Um, and then they have DLC out right now. That's the Shadows Reach and Shadows Fall, um, I, which I think come bundled together. Like you get both of those, and those also come with some new cards and stuff like that. But these are set as campaigns that actually have um, f the same way that they had those encounters. These campaigns have five different quests slash encounters that are a part of the campaign that you can go through and play. Um, so Tally, how about we start off with the Feast for Trolls? Sounds good to me. Uh, there is two different, uh, they have playstyles here, um, within the base game, which is narrative and challenge, and then there's a third one, I think, that opens up if you beat it on challenge. I don't remember how the settings work, but, but uh, the differences come down to basically how you how much resources you get each turn how many resources Sauron gets you'll see kind of that in a second how many cards you draw enemy health stuff like that how fast the threat meter advances um, the deck you can uh, come with some pre-built ones or you can use a custom deck uh, did you have to build a, a deck tally yeah I built a couple of decks I think tonight I'm gonna use an elf deck that I built Okay. Kind of balanced uh, lore, spirit, tactics deck. Lore, spirit, and tactics. All right. So then I'm going to go with a leadership lore deck that I put together. 
I'm going to host a game, so that's private. And I will see if I can go ahead and just invite you. Hmm. Would you mind? Send you in. One sec. Nope. Let me see if I can get any screen. There we go. There we go. Uh, so yeah, they have thing here for allow duplicate heroes. You could uncheck that and force people to not. So, for instance, Tal and I both had the same idea. Yeah, Arwen's pretty good. Let's both include her. Um, there's also a turn timer. Oh, it did the thing again. It did the thing again. Yep. It does this thing where uh, it both invites through Steam and through in the game. Uh, and I tried to click through in the game at first, but that did not work. Let me see if I can just invite you through Steam and see how that does. Are you able to ready There up? we go. Alright. That seems like the better way then. Alright, so you get some setup to all this. I, I don't know. I kind of enjoy this. It's nice little. It's narrated. Everything's voiced. Uh, different characters. Like the map painting. Yeah. So we won't go through all of this, but hey, basically it's like, you're out. You see some goblins and wolves, so you should go take care of them. Throw cards at them. That's right. Yeah, a gambit. Alright, so... Uh, speaking again about the sort of Hearthstone appearance. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. So the way this starts is... Uh, you choose three heroes for your deck, and, and there's uh, different spheres of influence. There's leadership, which is purple, there's lore, which is green, there's tactics, which is red, and there's spirit, which is blue. I have mainly a leadership and lore deck, so I have two leadership leaders and one lore leader. I'll get into the reasons for that later. But so initially, I can see then when I build a deck, I can only use cards from that particular sphere of influence, right? So I can only use purple and green cards. I can't use tactics or spirit because I don't have one of those heroes. Um, you, when the play starts, you are seeing your initial hand. If there's anything that you want to change out or you know swap out, you can do so. You know, again, you're kind of looking at this the same way that you would for resources in a game. Like if you have a bunch of high cost cards, you probably don't want them initially. You want to get them later. I've got some low-cost ones, so I'm going to go ahead and keep these, and these also are pretty good initial places to start. Um, this then tells you your objective, so we're going to have to deal with the goblins to search for the lost dwarves. Uh, you can see then on the board here there are one, two, three, four, five goblins, and then there's two special things. Uh, you can right-click on anything on the PC here to take a look at the cards themselves in a little bit more detail. So this is our main object objective, deal with the goblins. This 27 I'll talk about, it's a willpower value. But then the text says I can either attack this directly or I can apply two progress per player for each enemy defeated. Uh, so in that case, if we defeat a goblin, it's going to apply four to this. Um, the goblins themselves, sometimes they have special abilities. So the harasser, he deals one damage to a random ally during the upkeep phase. Uh, this guy has pursuit and ranged, and sometimes hovering over works. Sometimes it doesn't. I noticed that too. Yeah, if it doesn't, there's you can click on the gear and then go to glossary, and you can look up. So, ranged, range basically lets you uh, hit flying things and and bypass block. Uh, pursuit we can look up is allows the unit to follow your heroes from one location to the next. A mechanic that we'll get into in a little bit this guy's range style anyways you get the idea for looking at all these and then the last thing here is this separate objective that uh, at the end of the round uh, the threat meter on the right will go up for each unwounded enemy that we have out here so a lot to take in at once there's a really good tutorial um, uh, for that goes through all this and, and it's you know five different things that they walk you through that's initially kind of like here's just basic what a round looks like, you know, attacking stuff. 
um, here's you know then going a little bit more in depth what these yellow values are the willpower values so that's when you can uh, attack objectives which are the uh, deal with the goblins and the ma massing for an attack uh, so they walk you through all this a little bit at a time so you get a better idea of what to do and how you're uh, pacing things. I'll say broadly speaking you know what the way the turns are divided up here is I, I take an action, Sauron takes an action, Tally takes an action, Sauron takes an action, I take an action so when no one can take any more actions that's the end of the round and then a new round starts and we get resources and cards. Um, I'm going to take for my first action, let's see, uh, self-preservation is a good thing on the upkeep, so I'm going to wait for right now. I'm going to go ahead and have this guy since he's ranged, so as ranged he can ignore this guy who is guarding, right? Normally if I was to attack with anyone else they have to attack the guard. But since he's ranged, he can ignore that. I'm going to have him just go ahead and kill this one guy, since he only has two life left. That gets rid of an enemy, and it puts progress on the bigger objective that we have here. So for my first turn, I'm going to block with Glorfindel, because he gets a special thing if he takes damage in a round. We get to decrease our threat at the end of the round. Yeah. Not quite as overpowered as in the... Living card game, but still pretty gosh darn good. Well, he doesn't have his special attachment in this game. That's what's wrong. Yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was... <laughs> um, Alright, so... For my next action, if I play a card, that, that is basically the only action I can take. Um, I think in this case... Hmm... Increasing threat isn't good, but there's probably going to be some enemies that we don't damage, so I'm going to use Arwen. Um, so characters have an attack value that's blue, a willpower value that's yellow, and their health, which is nine. Or, which is red, sorry. Which is <laughs> which nine is for Arwen. Yeah, which is, <laughs> their health is nine. <laughs> uh, Arwen has a lot of willpower, and so I'm going to have her go after this objective, so we can start trying to clear that out before it... Uh, adds a bunch of threat that we don't want. The reason you don't want threat is on the right hand side there um, there's going to be special things that happen and basically I think if you get to 50 the game's over, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's how it works in the living card game. I was just trying to remember whether or not it works here for that same. But I'm going to put a, an attachment on Legolas. Okay. Plus, plus one damage, plus one health. That has to be attached to it. Seems elf. like a good thing. Alright, I'm going to. So, the other thing is, uh, as cooperative, like, not only are Tally and I going to be talking back and forth about things to do, um, I could actually play cards on her characters if they need them, or vice versa. Um, I am going to, at the moment, just to keep him going, I'm going to play this. Mm -hmm. Restore two health to to Glorfindel over there. Old Glorfie, as I call him. Let's say Gazinte. Glorfindel. Pardon take me. Take out this uh, sniper from like last now. All right. So he put an attachment on that guy who block. Um, basically reduces any damage taken by one. So as a guy that is already have guard that we have to attack first, that's not a great thing, but there's ways around that too. Um, I am, he's got two resources left too. I'm gonna go ahead and play Vance Warning. Oh, and actually it's good that that happened. I'd actually rather him cancel that than cancel something else, so. What a Jace. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, it took me a I, got, I got that reference. Yeah, Magic the Gathering reference is just casually dropping that in there. 
played a lot of duels of the planeswalkers on 360 <laughs> a long nice. time ago and um, Jesus, such yeah. a jerk yes cancel 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 yes let me tell you about my friend who was a Jace when we played the game. <laughs> His favorite color was blue. All right, so uh, I have a few different options here. I'm going to use um, uh, this character. They can't really attack anything, so I'm going to use them to go ahead and finish up that objective so that it doesn't cause us the problems. Which of these guys do you want to go for first, Jason? With attack? Um, how about the guy that has, yeah, the 3-6, the, the, three, six, the veteran patrol? Because I can take Sounds him good. out. If you attack him, then I can take finish him up with my guys. I'm going to apply this three progress from Arwen to the uh, fate meter. I think that sounds good. So, Sauron has his threat meter that as it goes up, some special things can happen. So, if our threat meter reaches 32, he gets this special effect where it, it becomes a plus one resource cost to players for that round. We similarly have our fate meter where rather than attack or apply uh, our willpower to an objective, we can apply our willpower to the fate meter itself and it ticks it up. Um, and we get our own little special thing, so if we hit four, we can trigger this where we get uh, all the characters get a uh, health back. We can save it up too, like we can fill this up and when we travel into the next scenario, um, this fate meter goes with us, right? So it's a way to kind of s stockpile and kind of keep some good things off, you know, for later. Um, Sometimes, you know, you may need it, so if you want to get up higher, you can get uh, additional resources every to each player for three rounds. Oh yeah, I need to heal someone. Um, I'm going to keep him healthy for right now. That one gets stealth to a random character per player, and then that other one is ready every hero, so basically they get to take two turns or two actions. Um, it, and the what, what you notice is, you know, we use a character and they exhaust, right? It's the same idea like in a lot of card games where you tap them and they can't take another action for that round. Everything making sense so far, Locke? Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're playing a, gar a card game, there's already sort of knowledge that you've gained from previous card games, whether it's digital or, or tabletop, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you get a new one, they're going to put their own spin on it, not only thematically, but even in this, there's, you know, a couple of abilities, abilities that you see where, you know, that already that one that where they follow them to the next location. That's kind of neat. Abilities. Abilities. Uh, so what Siron did just there is he got himself some more resources. Um, you may notice those numbers going up and down as we, you know, use stuff. Obviously, it's not great for him to have a bunch of resources, and now he just made something more of a threat that needs to be dealt with. Oh, what's that? Shed three cards from each player's deck. Ah, oh, good. Thanks for that. All right, so let's just... Wait, where's my ranged? Oh, I don't have ranged. Right. Hmm. What a jerk. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. Force you to do something. So this guy, the Northern Survivor, has Stalwart, which basically means he can take two actions uh, in a round rather right. than just the one. Welcome to Rivendell. I'll heal up your Jarwolf. 
Yarwolf. Yar, Yaro. Yaro. Oh, I think I'm. Oh no. It's a two, four, six, eight. Put a spike trap on the guy without a without block. I don't quite have enough. All right. Self preservation. I'm just gonna go ahead and take stuff away on that. So a large part of this game is is striking that balance between, you know, do we deal with enemies? Do we just directly attack the thing and try and progress as quickly as possible? Because um, one thing is when we travel. Sauron will get one free action basically so like an enemy can attack us so if we he has a bunch of enemies out they will get a chance to do something so there's a lot of balancing between progressing the objective dealing with enemies dealing with threat there's a lot of you know it's it's a constant sort of plate juggling game you cool with um activating the eight fate meter gives us more resources oh yeah that sounds great for three rounds yeah Um, if we're going to be doing that, alright, I'm going to go ahead and get him back into play real quick, try and just whittle away at him, don't like him having 4 attack. Oof. him waste that on something. Alright, so let's get you to do what? Dick move. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear that. So we can get out of here. It's cool. She's got another one. Do uh, I'm gonna put this All on the other blade. Dwalin. get health back because when his health drops he becomes Put less useful. Put an attachment on Arwen where we get minus two threat whenever we travel now. Oh. Alright. Well I'm going to say let's go ahead and travel. <laughs> now if those guys were ready you know basically traveling counts as my action so they would have been able to do something. He did already pass so I'm going to just dump all of this. Oh wait actually yeah. Here. Oh I can still do that apparently. Oh. Until you hit travel. That's the smarter play. There is something here, though, like where... Yeah, yeah. So there's something called Looming Threat that's going to pop up on the board that's really going to ruin our day if, if it uh, comes up here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so that's good. Overall, I'd say that's pretty good. We got a lot of stuff going in for this next round. So how does it determine the next map? Is it just part of the quest line? Yeah, it's always set. And actually, once you've beat a encounter, 
you can go in and you can look at Sauron's deck so you can uh, uh, build for it. Yeah, because I remember actually with the with the living card game, I asked Tyler this one time playing it. I was like, do you look ahead and see what the encounter is to plan for it, or do you just go in blind and hope for the best? I believe your answer was, oh no, you have to look at that. <laughs> or, you know, just play it and then lose horribly. Right. And then, right and, then and then, yeah, do better the next time. Because, uh, yeah, like, it, it, a lot of this stuff can be pretty... Um... Why is he not getting health for that? Or is it just not showing up on mine? How much health does my Dwalin show up as? I see eight. Yeah, I do too. I thought he had eight before you healed him. I think it said seven on my screen. Oh, weird. All right, I don't know. Uh, so that does me good if I have a bunch of allies, which I currently don't. I can just get a resource, but I'd rather have other stuff. All right. Um, so what we have to deal with here. We've got this Belchy Shadow that. Uh, after he attacks, uh, the defender has to discard one card. We have a smelly shadow that, whenever he, whatever he attacks, exhausts that character, which is not great. And then the grunty shadow captures uh, allies into a heavy cauldron, which is not in play here. Um, this trouble with trolls is a good thing to get rid of, and uh, but we have to get rid of that guard thing first, so let me just go ahead and... Yargowulf can do that, and we'll s see what these guys do. Um, we have different location specific and different things over here on the fate side, so... We can deal a bunch of damage to one enemy. We can get a random attachment to each player, which isn't bad. Then we can heal everybody. Unfortunately, if we hit 24, there's no special thing that happens for us. Like, you know, we don't just win the encounter if we hit 24. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start ticking that off. Out some damage there. The enemy is upon us. I'm going to go ahead and put this on him so he'll, he's got some self preservation too. Uh, and you have a deck of 30 cards, and that's kind of fixed. Uh, and that deck is persistent as you go through each one of the uh, phases of this, right? So I don't get to shuffle my discard back into it. Once it's done, it's done. Like you don't lose if your deck is gone, but you have whatever cards you have left and that's all you can use. Um, all right, I'm gonna use his power, get him ready again, then go ahead and we'll attack. I don't like dis discarding cards. <laughs> What's the resource on your left? This fate meter. Um, fate. So the... Um, That's how you got that, that buff. Right, so the willpower of every character, you can either apply that to objective cards that have... This one's time, so we can't do anything to it, but other uh, objective cards that look like this have a specific value. So basically, like you're quote-unquote attacking that objective with your willpower. Right. Versus attacking, you know, monsters with your attack. Um, rather than apply it to an objective, though, you can fill up this fate meter, and it gives you special bonuses at certain levels. Nice. Um, 
and this is something that that carries with you to the next encounter as well so like if we just don't use anything here and travel we have 17 we'll have 17 for the next encounter oh, nice um so how are we looking for health all around let me heal your guy over there You're making some use out of him. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm, all right. There's a play here that I'm going to do, but I have to time it right. All right, so. We'll start with. I can shoot whatever. Yeah, maybe discard a card. choices any ally okay I don't want him to capture an ally so I'm gonna have him go ahead and guard that does some damage back Sure. Friggin' troll blood. Yeah, right. In need not only but ready. All right. Uh, so things that guard also prevent us from doing any. <laughs> oh. Wow. Sauron, he's a real jerk. Uh, uh, things that are guarding also prevent us from clearing out objectives, so. Uh, every time with this guy. All right, so he can't play anymore, so here is what I'm going to do. Do that. Go ahead and do that. All the self-preservation. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to do this. I am a servant of the secret fire. And that. Reduce our threat. And then I'm just I'm looking at the, the Fantasy Flight store, since it, they still have it here. Yeah. Tally, how much have you spent on this game? Uh, I don't have everything for this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, they have about a dozen drop-down menus, and within yeah, each drop-down menu, there's about a dozen uh, expansions. I stopped buying stuff for the physical game, like, years ago. Right, right. But I still keep up with the news and the releases, just because nice. it's fun. Nice. But yeah, I, I've dropped a fair amount of money on this and Netrunner. I don't fault you for that. Alright. I think that's everything I can do here. Uh, so one of the things I did, so normally Gandalf at the end of a round leaves, but I have a special attachment, Narya, that makes him lose fleeting so that now he's going to stick around. Which is really useful because Gandalf's a very good ally, as you might imagine. Um, we've got heals for days, folks. Physician, heal thyself. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, so 
Again, we're going to go back to if he attacks an ally, which includes Gandalf, that's going to be bad. So I need to put him on guard. Get him, Legolas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Threw them in a sack. Alright. I want to then... Do you remember what the limit is for characters you can have out? Seven, I want to say. One, two, three. All right, so yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and play this then, so I can. Get my resources and not get filled up here. Oh boy, let's not have that. That guy is no longer stop work now. That's good. Uh, all right, so ranged uh, as flying, you can't hit with anybody unless it's uh, also ranged. So I right, shoot the bats. Nice thing is, once they attack, they're no longer flying, so anybody can hit them. But we still have the block up. So yeah, I mean, a large part of it is this, right? Like I. Th Playing through this versus living card game, there's a lot of stuff that is obviously different, but this is still a really good, I think, interpretation of it. Um, and particularly because I love the mechanics of the living card game, but it is a lot. And I think the way that they've kind of simplified things, and again, not a good verbiage, but hearthstoneized it, I think is. It, it works. It works for this. Yeah, I mean, with the amount of information that you are given, it's nice to have even the the stats on those characters be something familiar that you know. Oh, it's okay. I know what those numbers always mean. Mm -hmm. and, that's and that's, that's attack. Like that's defense. That, that's yeah. Yeah, basic example there. So. Yeah, I'm looking at shots of the the tabletop version, and uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, which uh, is okay. I like that. I like crunchy games, and this probably is even like as far as tabletop stuff goes, it's probably pretty streamlined. But that guy's got some bad attachments on him. Guess we're not gonna attack him anymore. Um. So our fate meter's pretty much full. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and guard with him too. And my phase. Alright, so... Next round we'll be able to travel, so it's just going to be holding out basically this time around. Keep Gandalf nice and healthy. All right. So my I'm pretty much filled up with allies, so I'm not going to be able to play anything else here uh, for them without having to remove something. The nice thing is, at least when you try to play it, it says choose something to get rid of or cancel this. Um, so I am going to instead. 
Uh, go ahead and use him to attack that. Sack. And then we're going to take out a troll. Well, that's a big guy. I fainted him. Yeah, you did. Well done. Just in case he makes a appearance next go around. Oh, that's weird. Did that did that count as a minion? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I think I oh think no, the no. are just supposed to go away. Oh no, okay, we did the round. Yeah, that's a revenge thing. Sorry, I was like, that's really weird. Sacrifice that guy. Alright. <laughs> not, the, not the best play. Wow. That's just, I mean, seriously. Seriously? <laughs> oh. What a, what a move. Just... That was a spite move. Yeah, that was. The last of the strange abominations. Alright. Final encounter, here we go. So we have two different ways. We can either hold out until the dawn, or we can defeat every troll. Uh, so the dawn is represented by this passing of the moon. Alright, who am I going to heal up here? See what we've got. What do you think about popping the uh, 14 fate objective when we get a chance? Uh, here's what I'll say. Oh, I think that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> well, I was just trying a to think of some build up. Yeah, I was. Well, there's. I've played through this once before, and I was trying to remember something, but I think that uh, that may be the best thing. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. Because, yeah, I knew that was coming, but I just was, wasn't was sure. I was like, I think it's better to do the 13. Two left that we have to deal with. Discard one card. Aren't you just something special? All right.
ally. Okay. Shall I see what the familiar boots is? Sure. Did that do anything? I thought I was supposed to release someone from. Wait. Put someone in my row. Oh, okay. Um. All right. So that's uh, reduce that. All right. Let's go ahead and. Bring about the dawn. I will say I'm, I'm should be able to take a few different uh, a few turns with uh, uh, party boy Aragorn. Oh, that's his nickname, party boy. Huh? Party boy. That was a <laughs> cute. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, okay, so that's just like the, the, you just triggered my trap card moment of them attacking that ally. So they got a ready Gandalf again. <clears throat> I think that's in uh, Locke's fanfic where Aragorn is referred to as Party Boy. I thought that was canon, but... <laughs> Yeah, Sauron, you're passing because you know he, you know you ain't got nothing left. Uh, so I need one ally up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ah. I'll do. All right. Now just to clear this. You would die before your stroke fell. Fall ridden down. Go get him, Dwalin. Take that, trolls. Huzzah! The weather turns gray and overcast. Is the Empire the remaining? We win. We did pretty well. Yeah. So, complete quest. You notice there's this fellowship currency up in the top right of the screen. That's what you use to buy some cards. Uh, there's stuff that you will get uh, that you can only buy directly using that. So you'll get here, I'm getting 1500 for completing and then getting a bonus for multiplayer. Uh, since this is my second time through, I earned a new player avatar. And then uh, I get some special money for completing certain challenges. Um, And then every time you complete a quest with a hero for the first time, you get another 500. So they, there's a lot of incentive to go back through and play these again. Play them with other uh, characters, play them with uh, different heroes and different decks. And, you know, like I said before, once you play through it once, you can see what's in Sauron's deck so you can uh, know what to kind of expect. Uh, it is interesting, like, so there are some cards that he never played. So because he never played them, I don't know... You know, they, they're, it says not yet encountered, so there's some things still that are a mystery, but for the rest of them I can see what they are uh, and kind of 
figure out how to build a deck around it to maximize, you know, our time with that. And yeah, I mean, that's that's the bulk of the game right there is going through and playing and, you know, you can build complementary decks with your friends. Like, I think, and, you know, Tal and I didn't talk about the kinds of decks that we were building, but those two worked really well off one another. Um, and uh, the more that you play, the more of that fellowship currency uh, you will earn. And then you can go back in here to decks and you can look at the entire card gallery of stuff, uh, all the heroes and stuff that you've unlocked. If you go to cards, then you can use their filter system here to just look at the ones that you don't own. So if there's specific ones that you want to buy, uh, for instance, maybe I want to get Bjorn or uh, Aristor or Urkenbrand or most important character of all, Farmer Maggot. Uh, yeah. You know, so it costs a thousand for just one and two thousand for two, uh, f assuming they are not uh, legendary. So there's three legendary cards: uh, Eorith, Raven Winged Helm, and Tom Bombadil. They cost three thousand per card. So, um, but they also are pretty good. So, like the Raven Winged Helm gives you plus one and. Uh, when attacking, and then you gain block when you're attacked, and block is what you know reduces the amount of damage you take by one. Uh, so that's a pretty good attachment to have. And Tom Bombadil, when he arrives, he automatically defeats a minion. Again, that's pretty strong, although he does have fleeting, so at the end of the round he leaves. Um, and Yorith has Please. a power where she restores three um, health to one character. Um, that's basically like then that's her action is you know you exhaust her and she heals someone so really good uh you know cards that are that i'm sure you know as the time goes on they're they've got more i mean lock you're looking through the website for just the uh, living card game and like, and stuff yeah, yeah. Uh, i think so far they're kind of following with the same idea for the expansion so shadow falls is this one i'm trying to remember I think that was the name of the first expansion for the Living Card game. Mm, was, I don't remember. It was close to it. The heroes that they added at least are familiar. And, like those were some of the f first heroes that I saw. Um, right. Though in the Living Card game, with the small packs of cards, you only got one hero per pack. Uh, in the right. deluxe expansions, you got three to four. Yeah. And they, they, to some degree, they kind of seem to be keeping with the same idea. So this isn't like, uh, so I have these hero packs and they release these with the expansions. I haven't seen them offer up, the, like, I haven't seen any microtransactions in the game as far as, like, I can't buy this fellowship currency. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, like, because the codes we got came with these, I'm not sure if how much these hero packs are, if they're... I, I looked it up on Steam, uh, and I think that they're 10 bucks. For the whole thing, though, right? For the like, whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's something that eventually they're going to offer those for individual sale, like, you know, two bucks for a hero pack and then something for the whole uh, DLC. Um, and then, yeah, you have your deck builder where you can go in, choose your heroes, and create a deck and everything else. I, I For what this could have been, like, as far as, you know, for a lot of these card games I've seen with the way that they handle... Um, that sort of currency and everything else. Um, it could be a lot worse, I think, uh, certainly for, for setting this up. Uh, I like, uh, yeah, so there you can see the, the camp, so the expansion pack gets you these hero packs and this campaign. Uh, so you can kind of see what each one gets you. Um, I don't know, I, I've been, I, I'm kind of, now, like I said, the start of this, as much as I've played the living card game version, I kind of have been gravitating more towards digital versions of a lot of these things because it's one a lot easier to maintain and play with others, especially since this is online uh, and you don't have to deal with shuffling cards and pulling stuff out and putting it all away. And uh, this is not obviously the exact same thing, but it's close enough that it still has the same feeling to it mm -hmm. so 
What do you think, Tally? I mean, someone. I think I think you've ended up playing a whole lot more of that the the physical version than I have. Yeah, I mean, I think for a digital implementation, um, it's good, and I think if it were to be evaluated completely separately from the tabletop game, uh, it's it's a good digital card game. They definitely had to change a lot. Uh, most of it, very understandably, because the Living Card Game came out uh, at least a decade ago now, or around then. So, and I think it had something like literally 13 phases of play in a round, and that's just not very <laughs> viable. Uh, and then each of those phases had like 20 different sub phases where you had opportunities to play cards at certain times or not. So some of it has to do with you know how much has changed for card games in that time period, and some of it has to do with the digital adaptation. Um, I have mixed feelings about some of the things they changed, but I, I do think that they're both good games independent of each other, and I do agree with you that they maintain the same feeling, if not, uh, if not very similar in their play style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, so as far as if you're looking for a card game to play with a friend, then you're, uh, this is something that you, you know, I think... Personally, I would say if you've played the physical version and you've had a tough time trying to convince a friend to get into it because of cost and time and everything else, I think this is a good middle ground, personally. Like, I think this is a great way to kind of say to someone, hey, all right, so not so much in the physical version. They've got this digital version. It's got a lot of the same beats to it and, you know, a whole lot less as far as m money commitment and time that you know it takes to set up and go through things although i will say that like you know we started this what 45 minutes ago or so as far as the stream goes uh and just going through the campaign you know uh can't take you anywhere i'd say from 30 minutes to an hour um or uh, you know depending on familiarity and how well you're doing and everything else and there is going to be some degree of failure to this like you know kind of expect that you may not get an encounter on the first go but uh you know there's enough that you'll see okay this is how this works and okay i need to try and change my deck and and you know account for these things adding cards that cancel more of sauron's actions or exhaust his you know minions or put more healing in my deck or whatever the case may be um and you know the, even if you fail a quest i think you still get some I, I'm, just trying to remember if you get anything. Yeah, there's like different objectives that you still get currency for. And yeah. Completing a stage gives you currency too, even yeah. if you didn't complete the whole thing. So I think the reward system is very fair. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the Lord of the Rings adventure card game. Any final thoughts before we head out of here? No, I don't think so. Um,. Like I said, I think it's a good digital card game implementation, and if you're interested in a cooperative digital card game experience, then I would say check it out, because that kind of experience is pretty rare right now. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we will be back next week with something. I honestly can't say what, just because it is release season right now, and there is a glut of co-op games uh, between Gears 5, uh, Borderlands 3, and there's something else I saw and I can't even remember now. Uh, it's so a good problem to have, though. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we'll be back next Monday with something else, and until then, I hope you all have a great week.